Today I'm here with Hollywood, my trusty range companion. We've shot almost every weekend together over the course of uh, probably about a year and a half or so, and uh, I thought he'd be a good guest for this uh, first 10 items to buy thought experiment. He comes from a background in trauma care, which basically makes him our team medic, whether he knows it or not. <laughs> and uh, he has tons of professional experience in self-defense training, medical training, night vision, and uh, came up through the ladder from a civilian perspective, which should contrast my brief time in the military, which kind of distorts my perspective when it comes to my ideal first 10 items a new shooter should buy. We know it takes a lot of time and money to build up your firearm and gear setups, and a lot of people don't have those extra funds every month to buy Gucci equipment all at once. And uh, with this in mind, we'll go through our view of which first 10 items someone should buy in that order. We also realize that the goal is to have all of these items and more, but this is a kind of a get you going time and money into consideration, and uh, sacrifices will be part of this as well. Me and Hollywood have both spent kind of crazy amounts of money going through trying all kinds of optics and setups, and we try to narrow down the most practical items through experience, and uh, we also share that feedback with each other all the time. So without further ado, I want to say thanks for being here with me. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here, man. I'm glad to, uh, glad to do this and have mercy on me. It's my first time doing one of these, so uh, try not to make an ass out of myself. Well... <laughs> I'm going to uh, give you the honors of going first. And uh, also, as you pick your items, if you have any brand recommendations, feel free to elaborate briefly on that as you uh, go along. Not a big deal. Everybody can see there's kind of like a go fish pull onto the right. Obviously, there should be more stuff, but this is your basic stuff, and it is kind of hard to pick. And Hollywood has not seen this list really until today, so he's going to have to make some hard decisions as well. Right. And uh, so, yeah, go ahead. Uh, pick your first item and let me know why or, you know, any brand you think is important. So first item is going to be the least sexy thing on the list that no one really wants to mess with because you can't take the cool Instagram photos with it. And that's going to be the med kit. Um, I mean, it, the reality is, is, you know, and this this obviously is going to come as biased because I come from a medical background. But the reality of the situation is, is you are so much more likely to need to deliver life-saving aid to yourself or someone close to you or even an innocent bystander from an accident or any other kind of like household or commercial injury or something like that. Um, so a good med kit and that, that med kit should include things like cat gen seven tourniquets, um, uh, basic things like compressed, compressed gauze or rolled gauze for wound packing. Um, pressure dressing materials, uh, basically basic stop the bleed materials. No, I'm, I'm actually, I'm like, I'm shocked, but I'm not because, you know, as I, in the intro, I explain your medical background and, uh, now I'm not surprised. So yeah, that, that's a cool one, man. I don't think a lot of people expect that. Um, th my new first item is definitely not what my first item would be couple years back, but uh, I think partially influenced from you, man. I spent a lot of time shooting into things you've kind of uh, told me and showed me. I'm actually going to take a pistol with three factory mags that come in with it, which is, you know, your standard Glocks. They usually come with uh, three pistol mags. The reason Fair I picked enough. this is um, I know the med's important, but I think a lot of people out there have zero experience whatsoever, so they need to start being familiar with weapons in general. They need to break their fear of them. You know, they look like these crazy alien technology at first, and then you realize most of the gadgets on them are simple function things. And uh, this could start getting people some time at the range. And I'm going to give you props here. You have convinced me that, you know, self-defense concealed carry is the most likely scenario as a civilian you would encounter. So I would say go ahead and grab a pistol and it's factory mags, and I might say just get a Glock 19. Man, that 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 would be my choice, and that is actually going to be second on my list, uh, is to go with a, a pistol. Um, so, you know, it, it comes down to a lot of things. Uh, you know, when I first got into this over 10 years ago, you know, the idea was is, you know, you're expecting this this kind of crazy end of the world scenario or whatever it may be. You know, the, the cliche is the zombie apocalypse, all that bullshit. But I mean, realistically, um, 
you are far, far more likely to need a concealed handgun than you're ever going to need to break out the rifle, the the armor, all that kind of shit. I mean, don't get me wrong. No one's going to argue that a pistol caliber round is more effective than a rifle caliber round, but you can absolutely do the job with a pistol. And so, you know, having that on you and making sure that that's something you're carrying every day and understand how to use it and use it well, that, that's very important and, and kind of a kind of getting off into a little a tangent here, a kind of a little tirade, but that really is, um, that, that should be number two, if not number one on everyone else's list too. My, uh, item number two would be the, uh, pistol concealed carry holster. Yep. yep. Um, and this is an obvious one. Um, I don't think I, I've never been a fan really of the people carrying outside waistband holsters. You know, the one, the ones that want to show off literally you're just making yourself a target. I don't like that. Um, if I was a bad guy, I'd be like, oh, well, that's the first guy that needs to go. So learning to, you know, a pistol and a concealed carry holster is so important. I mean, low vis, I mean, it seems appendix is the way to go uh, for a lot of reasons we won't have time to talk about. Maybe we'll do that later. But yeah, a concealed carry holster, you could carry maybe a pistol in your pocket for a while or a pack or a backpack or a vertex bag. But eventually you're just going to need to start doing some concealed carry training as well and having the holster and getting used to it. Uh, that's very important. So that's my number two. Uh, that would be my number three, because if you're going to carry one of those things around, you need to carry it with a round in the chamber. And uh, the best way to do that is to have a good holster to carry it in. Yeah. How funny is it also that most outside waistband holsters we see do not even have like retention to protect yes. it. It's, they're literally just in like open competition style thin holsters that someone could yank it right out of. Yes. Yes. Indeed. No one's carrying around a Safari Land outside waistband. No, no. Half the time it's some like Uncle Mike's or some, you know, it's some turd brand, like poverty brand. It's like, dude, why? You know, so I'm with you there, man. Okay. Uh, moving on to my number three. And I looked at this a while ago when I made it and I thought I had a good order. And here I am staring at it months later with you. And I don't remember my order. So, <laughs> um, man, my number three, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to let you influence it with, with what you say, everything going on in the world. Um, I am actually going to say, let's go ahead and start learning some uh, medical training as well. Uh, you're already carrying a pistol with you. Bad things could happen with it. You know how to use it. You're proficient or other people are going to use these things. Y you know, maybe you won't even always have your pistol on you, but you know, have a med kit maybe in your car. So, uh, I'll pass off number four to you. No, and <clears throat> that's, that's, that's a good choice. And it's a good rationale. Um, you know, the, just a quick caveat on that two, two things. Number one, Stop the bleed courses are generally free in most cities. So it's pretty easy to get online, search stop the bleed course in your city. And within a couple of months, there'll be one that comes through and that is free training and it's good training. It, and it'll be the basics. It'll be packing a wound. It'll be applying a tourniquet correctly. It'll be those sorts of things. Maybe I'll put um, a, a, a link in the description or something for that. Stop the bleed. Stop the bleed. Um, for me, my number four at this point, oh, uh, you know, I think I'm going to go ahead and say at this point, I'm going to move the armor plates over, but I'm going to say soft armor. Oh, why is the chest rig coming over? Um, there we go. So soft armor. Uh, and, and this is what I mean by that. I mean your police style vests. So, you know, your level two or three A soft armor vest will stop virtually every handgun round um and some shotgun rounds actually most shotgun rounds it won't feel good when you get hit but it will stop them you can buy police soft armor like uh surplus or used from a site called bulletproofme.com they take in these minimally used in some cases never used police vests refurbish them, make sure they're good to go, warrant them and everything. Cause Kevlar generally doesn't go bad as long as you don't leave it in like humid environments and shit like that. So you can buy these things for like $200 and they go, they, they go under a button up shirt. No one would know you're wearing it under a hoodie. No one would know you're wearing it. And you think about it, that gives you almost complete torso coverage. So I say armor plates, but not truly armor plates. I say, go get your soft armor first. And the site is called bulletproofme.com. You generally have to order it by phone. You have to call them and tell them what you want, but dude, they're good dudes. I have a set of soft armor from them. I swear to God, it was brand new when I got it. I swear to God. Well, since you're on that note, do they have uh, women's cuts? 
Yes. Do you absolutely. know? Absolutely. Because there's a lot of female police, and I'm sure they have cuts for the yep. females. And they what have if people want to get something for their girlfriend or their wife or their daughters or something, you know? All shapes and sizes. So that's my number four, and uh, <laughs> that's my final answer. Uh, my number four. Um, so, oh, man, this is a hard one. Getting people probably some uh, rifle training. Uh, you know me. Yeah, man. I love me that's some cool. rifle action. Um, so I am going to, there's lots of good options out there, but let's be honest. This is America. This is the most popular rifle. Um, you need to start getting an AR-15. You just do. Um, modular, reliable. People don't think that, but you know, other channels have proven that they are. And um, we don't have any issues. And maybe there's a couple people out there that understand this because they've shot a lot and they own a bunch of different brands. Um, I think you can't go wrong with just buying, you know, a quasi mid-tier lower, an Aero Precision. The M4E ones are great, um, or just their stock ones. And then slap a quality upper on this sucker. I'm talking get you a BCM Cold Hammer Forged, get you a Daniel Defense Cold Hammer Forged, get you a Colt LE6920 upper, and just slap the upper on that lower. And uh, um, you need to get a rifle and start getting used to it. Just like, you know, my number one and two spot, you need to start getting used to a pistol. You know what, man? I, I, I completely agree that that's not going to be my number five, but the premise I completely agree with. And, and I can't say it enough too. like people seem to think like, you know, your first rifle has got to be some Daniel defense or something like that. Like, man, I, I have beat the f- living shit out of, I don't know how many PSAs and they never let me down. They just didn't. I, I don't have any now. Um, but man, I ran them for a long, long time through a lot of courses and I never had one fail on me. All right. So, um, we on my number five, your number five. So my number five is going to be a pistol light. Um, you know, you can't, uh, you can't shoot what you can't see. And depending on where you live, nighttime is half the time. And if you live like us in Ohio, where in the winter it's pitch black by 5 p.m., um, pretty good idea to be able to to have that so that you can at least see what you're doing. Because, again, you're responsible for every round you fire. So if you fuck up and zip somebody who's not ac- you know, actually a threat, you're going to a federal pound me in the ass prison. Uh, it, it was dark out. It's not going to be an excuse. It's going to work for you. So you got to be able to see what's happening. So that's me. You know, uh, you make me feel like I messed up a little bit, but, uh, um, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stick to my guns literally. (laughs) Oh man, that's cool. My, uh, number five, I am going to actually do a red dot for the rifle to get that rifle going. Good Um, choice. The reason I choose the red dot or a holographic site, like an EOTech is because a red dot without any magnification just yet still can teach you shooting fundamentals for distance, your holds, your um, uh, up close shooting. It, it doubles down for home defense. And, you know, magnification will come into play later. If you really need to, you know, down the road, you can get a magnifier for this. But uh, maybe just, you know, a, a hollow sun, the HS403 is fine. Get you a T2 if, you, if you're if you a big baller. You got the funds for it. But um, later, you could always just slap some iron sights behind this bad boy and just co-witness through it. That would be a great option. Just start getting your fundamentals. Spend some time on a flat range. Spend your time on a cool tactical range, doing up drills and stuff. But uh, now you you really can't be shooting a rifle without you know a red dot or some sort of aiming device. Completely agree. And you know honestly, you we always have this back and forth because you tend to like the more magnified optics, and I tend to love my red dots. Um, you know, it, there's not a whole lot you can't do with a red dot on a rifle. Like, nah, you're not going to be making excellent, you know, consistent hits out the five, 600 yards. Like you're not going to be stretching the legs of the five, five, six round with a red dot, especially not one without a magnifier, but realistically 300 yards and in, I mean, how often we go out there, like we take new shooters out all the time, get them dialed in at, you know, whatever distance and then move them out to 300 yards and they get to start nailing targets. They can barely see with their own eyes. And that's part of my mill background. I think if 300 just been ingrained like it's normal, where I notice a lot of people out here in the civilian world, that's kind of far to them. Um, but it's it's how you set your mentality from the beginning. You know, if you realize a good zero, a tight zero confirmed at distance, 300 is literally just like pegging 100 at some point, just a little more stable. You got to take yep. just a hair more time. 
you know, that would vary in to a degree in the civilian world, but there's also going to be plenty of which you've opened my mind to. There's also going to be plenty of those engagements at four or five, 600 yards in the civilian world as well. I mean, you know, if dude up the street sees somebody running around with all this Gucci shit on and he can clap you from 500 yards, 600 yards out with his shitty, you know, cheap Bushnell scope on top of his DPMS 308 AR, <laughs> you know, you suddenly just became a loot drop for this guy with all your, you know, <laughs> yeah. all your fucking cry shit on, you know, some, <laughs> some homeless guy in Seattle is going to be. <laughs> You're yeah, 10 exactly. grand deep in equipping me, you know, being able to shoot to 300 is important because if a guy's out there at 300 and he sees you and stuff, well, that's me. I'm going to be the guy clapping you at 400. I'm just saying. No, you are. So if there's people like are. me out there and you out there that are 500 yards, well, people better wake up and realize you will get clapped from 400, 500 yards. So oh, yeah. maybe you want to practice it or get the hell out of Dodge. You better be leaving if you don't practice past 200 yards. So. All right. Number six. Number six for me is speaking of, I'm in the rifle category now. So number six for me is going to be a semi-auto rifle. And I'm a big fan of the AR platform myself, dude. I mean, you and I are the same, right? Like we run shitty steel case Tula to, to play at the range, right? Yep. Eats it all. When's the last time one of yours like choked up? I can't remember the last time one of my rifles choked up. Mine only has choked up when I changed out parts to do stupid things, which we won't say on here, but you know, sometimes the things I've done to them mess them up. Yes, absolutely. So it's, it's my fault, not the rifle's fault. So yes, go get yourself a decent semi-auto AR. Yeah. And to reiterate the point, I just start with the AR. And if you want to be a collector one day and get your Galil and your Tavor and your AK and SIGs, MCX, whatever, just start with the AR. This is your first 10 items it's really important to get you going you can buy all the collector shit later it is and it sucks man it sucks because i'm like i said man i get it dude i miss a lot of my toys but this it man just be practical and that's what this is all about yep all right what's Um, your number seven man uh no my number six um i'm actually so i'm actually gonna go with the uh everyday backpack you know uh some kind of uh edc backpack the reason is we're starting to build up some gear we're almost getting to the point where, you know, whether, you know, you're really familiar with your stuff, you're starting to build up equipment, you need to start having a way to carry this, whether it be to the range in your vehicle. Um, and you're going to be getting more stuff along the way. So backpacks are actually pretty important. Um, I would say something that's, you know, incognito, quit getting the, you know, the Marpat Molly backpack that everyone and their sister at this point of 20 years of GWAT, you know, war knows what it is. And, uh, you know, you can carry your med kit in this. You, you can carry your pistol in it with the extra mags. You can carry your other rifle mag in it. You can actually, if you get the right size, you know, even like vertex, the gamuts and stuff, you can pop your upper off of your lower and carry your complete rifle in this backpack. Everything can go in this. Don't get the 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 super military looking ones, the tactical looking ones, or go find that like hiking backpack that's like like you said blue or orange or something like that that like clearly, you know, doesn't scream tactical. That like, don't don't have a tactical looking bag. And so for me, number seven is first things first. I want my sighting system, so I'm going to go with a red dot. That can be anything your choice. I actually do like the Hollow Suns. I mean, yeah, they're Chinesium, and I get it, but. You know, if you don't have the money to drop on an Aimpoint T2 or an EOTech EXPS or whatever, man, the the Hollow Sun 403s are great little red dots. They just run. They just do. And they're tough. So that's my number seven red dot site of some kind. So so now that you did this, I, I'm kind of up close to the mic and I didn't even see the rifle sling down there. And my original thoughts as I had. So hey, look, I'm going to cheat real quick. I'm going to take this EDC backpack. <laughs> Let me pretend that whole rant was my I seven because I need. I meant to put this on here. Mm-hmm. Um, rifle sling is my. Uh, so I apologize. Let's just pretend you know that was the order it went in. I, I agree. You need a rifle sling, um, not just for the cool you know tactical on your chest crap or what you mentioned, but climbing objects, getting the hell out of dodge. There's just there's so many reasons you could drag somebody if they have the rifle sling on. There's just lots of reasons to have rifle slings. You can actually fight without one if you really needed to. You know, the old mill slings we had were just your standard, uh, you know, loop from the uh, 
uh, sling loops, you know, they go underneath. We used yeah. to put our elbows to our hand and that was about the distance from the rifle. It was about enough to sling it over you. If you were just in your basic BDUs, you couldn't do that over a plate carrier. And there's a lot of, uh, uh, drill and ceremony reasons. They put the slings there kind of sucks, but you know, there's lots of times overseas when I was in Iraq where I, I really was just hauling this thing around without the sling on me. I'm not going to lie with the ability we have now. And when people get into very, very, uh, technical training and upgrading themselves with their weapons, they will need a sling. So, so red dot rifle sling, and then the EDC backpack is what I talked about. So, uh, yeah, yeah. number eight for you. Number eight for me is going to be that sling. And the reason I didn't choose the sling before the dot was just because like we'd said, we'd are just established a second ago, no sights at all on the rifle, you know, that came with it. It didn't come with anything and you got to have sights. So above and beyond, all, you got to have a way to aim that thing. So my red dot came first, but then after that sling, man, absolutely. Isn't it kind of crazy? These companies are stopped. They're not really putting iron sights anymore. Like even the Colts, when they were coming out with like the Magpul furniture, you know, several years back with a fixed front sight post, they still would throw in like a rear Magpul iron sight with it. A lot of these companies are marketing these guns without sights as quote unquote optics ready. Optics ready is not a, uh, an upgrade. <laughs> okay. That's not an upgrade. That's their way of saying, Hey, we just didn't put any fucking sights on it at all. <laughs> yeah, tragic. <laughs> you know, so we didn't even make an effort. So, uh, that's what that means. So, yeah. all right. So number eight for me, who this is getting real bad. So about the light, the reason I didn't pick the lights first is because there was once upon a time where people really didn't run lights on rifles and you acquire some bit of night vision. It is true. If you're out in the dark for a long time, you start to see. Now, here's the reality why I didn't. I wanted to get people faster to the weapons up and running and to the backpack and the med kit. And let's be honest, most likely 335 million Americans in our lifetime, the chance of any of us even being in any of these fantasy firefights we talk about isn't really going to happen. So I skipped the lights to get us to the range time where we start shooting. So I did skip those, but it is important, like you say. So the first one I would actually upgrade is the realistic one, which is the pistol. I'm going to get to a pistol light next. Now we can start getting all the fancy Gucci shit in my mind, uh, which includes the pistol light that does enhance the ability, like you said, to be able to identify stuff, shoot in the dark. So I just skipped them for now. And now it's time to actually start getting them. We got training in. We've been at the range a lot. Our weapons are ready to go. We got optics on them. Now we can start getting into the Gucci shit. Fair enough. Uh, number nine for you. Number nine for me is actually going to be the rifle light. So I agree with what you're saying. Like, yeah, there, there was once upon a time and in still some cases where people don't run a right, like a light on the rifle and you just learn to roll with it. But where that is different for us, I see it as, again, we're in the civilian environment. So, you know, as a civvy, <laughs> you smoke the wrong person you, 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 you shoot somebody, you better, better be able to clearly articulate and demonstrate that they were a threat, which means you need to be able to say, you know, I shined my light on him. I could clearly see that, you know, pistol in his hands and you went with it. So for me, if you're going to have a weapon system, it needs to have all the basics first before you jump to a different system. So, um, I would have actually way, way, way back up on that list, went to a pistol red dot fairly early on as well. But because I didn't start on pistols with red dots and, you know, a lot of people still don't run them yet and they're completely capable of being ram with just the irons that come on them. That's why I didn't choose a pistol red dot, although I have dots on all of my pistols. So anyway, long story short, rifle light is my number nine because you got to be able to, I can't shoot what I can't see. Um, my number nine, I'm actually going to, or for a couple of reasons, I'm going to go mag pouches, um, preferably STAC Kiwis. And, you know, they come with malice clips, which they may be floppy on a belt, but to be honest, you can start running these directly on a belt with just your pair of pants. You know, you can strap it on there if you need to pull a shirt over them. They're real slim line. And then guess what? Those extra factory mags you had in your pistol. You can start putting those in there extra if you want to conceal or the rain training when you're doing tons of badass quick speed reloads. Now, maybe get this mag pouch set here because it'll tie in later, but, you know, get the two pistol, the single rifle. That's 30 rounds of pistol if you have a Glock 19 and 30 rounds of rifle ammunition. I mean, that'll really get you going. So uh, I choose the mag pouches first because, like I said, we don't need anything to attach them yet. We can just use the mouse clips to our regular pants belt. 
maybe a little floppy. Yeah, but it does work. You know what? I don't think that's a bad choice at all. I'm also a big fan of the STAC Kiwis. Uh, great choice. They're great mag pouches. I'm going to go with 10 extra mags. Uh, and the reason I'm going to say that is because you can never have enough mags and ammo. I always have multiple pockets on my pants, even when I'm wearing fucking sweatpants. So I've always got a way. It's not a great way. It's not ideal, but I can always dig into my pocket for a magazine if if push comes to shove. Um, you know, but if all I have are the two magazines that came with my gun when I bought it and I managed to fuck one of those mags up at the range or, you know, whatever, and then I'm down to just one mag, it doesn't matter what mag carrier I've got on me. I'm screwed because I didn't have extra mags. My full loadout at this point is, you know, a med kit, however you can stick it to you, your basic concealed carry pistol with its holster and its light some soft armor and a tricked out rifle with some extra mags. And I mean, you think about all the damage you can do with just that setup. I mean that you're still very light, very maneuverable. You've got all the high points. You've got five, five, six rounds. You've got nine mil or whatever your sidearm rounds are going to be. You've got concealed and overt and you've got armor. And, uh, yeah. So that's why I set up. So how painful is it looking? Well, let me do my number 10. Let me do my number 10 first since, you're good. Uh, this one's kind of hard. I'm torn because look, you know, I love extra mags and I love having a, you know, a ton of ammo ready in any time, any place. Let's say screw the plate carrier for now. We already have our mag pouches. We don't need a fancy duty belt yet. We can clip these to our regular belt. Uh, ooh, this is painful. This is the sacrifice part. You know, we need all this, all this stuff you should have. Yeah. I have all this shit too, right? Like I couldn't live without it. We have duplicates and triplicates of this stuff. Uh, of all this bullshit. Yes. Yeah. I am going to, yeah, real quick before we finish this, I, I, I'm going to go with the mags. I, I want to have a bunch loaded, and here's why. Like we said at the very beginning of this whole thing, most likely we are going to be in a concealed carry pistol situation realistically. I already chose the light for the pistol, so that covers the most realistic scenario. In the event I have to use a rifle where everything's already gone bad anyway, I'm going to have a bunch of extra mags. Um, not too far off from yours overall in conclusion, no, uh, uh -uh. looking at this, cause obviously I can't see yours besides us chatting until the uh, edit's done. Um, how painful, what's the most painful thing up in the, uh, you know, the go fish pool up there that you, it pains you to see you not having it. Mm, probably the mag pouches. Cause I love my mag pouches. Like I really do. I'm a big fan of mag pouches. I love, you know, speed reloading off, off of it. It's just, it's just too easy. Um, so honestly, yeah, I mean, if I could extend it one more out, the mag pouches would probably come next. But, you know, I, I, I really would, I really like LPVOs or the ability to magnify, you know, um, everyday carry pack. Like I said, I leave the house every day with an EDC pack. Like it's, it just happens to be a backpack that all my shit goes into, not just dangerous stuff, you know? Yep. Um, and then, <clears throat> I mean, honestly though, like, you, you know, me, like we've shot together enough. Like I have in for the viewers, I have all this shit at home and I'm not saying you shouldn't have it too. Like if you can afford it, go get it all and get lots of it. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but that stuff has its place. Like the, the modern minute man, the, you know, prepared citizen aspect and stuff like that. Like, yeah, you should have that gear. You should have a plate carrier. You should have a, a ballistic helmet. You should have a shot timer to, to, you know, rock and roll at the range. I mean, shooting under, you know, time really raises your stress level and it really does improve you as a shooter. You should have an LPVO. You should have some sick battle belt, you know, whatever with, you know, good pouches and everything. You should have a, a, a multiple suppressors shooting suppressed is awesome you should you should have a can but at the end of the day if i just had to grab a few things and run my list i think is probably where i would want to go because not only i mean the only thing that's not concealable easily within my list is the rifle and as as delta had said earlier i mean you can break the thing down into two parts and throw it into a backpack or whatever so you know, or it can just stay in the trunk ready to roll with all those 10 extra mags loaded up beside it. So you've just got to fight your way to your car with your concealed carry pistol, which is very doable, especially if you've got two spare mags on you that are, you know, full that that's very doable. And so, you know, just obviously we both have all of this shit, but when it comes down to like, Hey, what should you really focus on getting right now? That was the purpose of this, this presentation. So there's a lot of, um, 
uh, subjectivity in this, but, uh, hopefully what we just did, um, kind of gives, you know, a brand new shooter getting into this or a worried citizen. You're like, man, there's this market is so saturated. What it is, should I start getting now? But like, look, <laughs> look at our, look at at least our top five or six. Exactly. Shoot a lot and you will, you will learn what you need just from shooting a lot. You know, you will, you will see what you need. Yeah, I'll leave this with like a, a another another saying I like. When you're talking about <clears throat> competency and everything else, and you know, competency, all that shit. <clears throat> confidence comes from competence. Competence comes from practice and experience. Even if you don't have the money to spend on extra ammo to practice with as much as you'd like, dry fire at home. Put your gear on and practice ready up drills with your red dot at home in your living room, whatever. Like, you know, practice drawing from your concealment at home in your living room, whatever. No, it's not fun and sexy and it doesn't go bang and it doesn't give you that cool flair or whatever when you're taking your video for Facebook, Instagram or whatever, what have you. But, you know, when push comes to shove, you're going to look a whole lot cooler when, you know, dude goes to jam a gun in your face and you've already seen it coming and you're already out. You beat him to the punch and you just, you know, turn his head into a fucking cloud of pink mist before <laughs> he even has a chance to, you, then you're going to look real fucking cool. Love it. Um, also, um, well, let me uh, end this by saying thanks a million for doing this. I know you had a long, 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 long day. Um, it's a lot more fun once you do it. Um, and or am I going to see you at the range next Sunday? I'm fiending. I believe so. I will. <laughs> uh, if not, you will see me there the following Sunday. And yeah, yeah. No, we're it's doing good, it. We're, we're doing it. Um, but yeah, man, this was fun. This was a. Uh, I'm glad I got the chance to do this. I'll be happy to do some more of them if people, you know, after you post this, decide they still want to listen to me ramble. So no, nah, I love it. Oh man, I'd love to them hear you talk about medical stuff too if they're into that. This be uh, happy to. They'd be happy to tell more stories. Anything they want. Yeah. Um. Let's say we know the our hey our real list would be like. 200 items realistically <laughs> yeah yeah my yeah so top yeah. 200 get them all right now but that's not the case so uh thanks for listening to this stuff uh thank you again a million for this and uh um anything you want to say no nah, just uh you know stay safe out there kings you know yeah you we're uh we're all in this bullshit together so they say so uh you know let's get our shit together and you know be ready for whatever happens <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video with my guest and friend Hollywood who also helped me film the footage for my low ammo training handbook video companion. This video was a project I started a few years ago and just recently finished it up. If you'd like to help support me create more content, consider going to the link in the description and picking one up. If you do buy one, thanks a million and stay tuned for the next video.